Hello, welcome back to part one of the gold version to Active Directory Lab setup. So the way that it works is I had pre-recorded all of the steps that I went through as I was setting up this lab. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to play back the video and then I'm going to talk you through what I was doing. I found it, it is easier like that because I did go through some trouble in um, setting up the lab and I decided let me record what I'm doing and then I can explain to you later what I did. So I'm just going to maximize the screen over there and press play. What you're looking at here is my note application. It is called um, Obsidian. If you see Obsidian notes, all I did basically is to uh, start Obsidian. Um, I think by default now it comes with a dark theme. I'm not too sure about that. And then basically I went over to um, uh, Mayfly's GitHub repository for this particular lab. And I basically copied the instructions uh, so that I can it, it can be easy for me to uh, basically copy and paste without having to go to his um, to his site all the time. I found it easy. Uh, the part that I also want to mention here is that um, I set this machine that set this lab up on a computer with uh, 24 gigs of RAM, and uh, when I looked at uh, LSCPU, that is the uh, command that you can run on your Linux terminal, it told me that the CPU basically has got six cores and six threads per, per core. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but if you want to know the identity of the CPU I'm talking about, there it is over there. You can Google just to get an idea of the kind of uh, CPU I was uh, running this on. Okay, I'm just going to hit play and then I'm going to take you through it. So at this stage, I had obviously uh, set up Ubuntu already and I did run the sudo apt update just to make sure that all the uh, updates are there and then you'll see as I run that command it will tell me that uh, all of the updates have already been applied and then that means there won't be a need for me to do the uh, apt upgrade so let me go ahead and play that That's me. I'm just setting up the window, making it nice and big. Thank you, John. And there you go. I'm writing sudo apt update. I'm putting in my password. And then it tells me, well, all packages up to date. So we move on. So next, uh, next I will be installing VirtualBox. Now, the thing I want to say about, um, I'm just going to pause a little bit. The thing I want to say about installing all of these packages, um, in order for me to make this video as short as possible, I do some trickery, meaning you will see some of the processes or some of the sequences proceeding <coughs> a lot a lot faster and that is because some of some of the tasks they take such a long time to run so what i would like you to pay attention to is the date and time information over there that's what you can use to give you an idea how long each process takes okay so i'm just going to hit play over there there we are it's busy downloading and you'll see when it reaches 10%, I basically accelerate the video. There you go. That's me accelerating the video. And we're done. And so basically, um, VirtualBox is now being properly set up. Next, uh, we're going to need to download the uh, Vagrant package. You'll see we're going to use the wget command to download the package. And once it is installed, we're going to install it using the sudo apt install. I had actually never seen um, a dev package installed this way. So here's one more thing I learned from Mayfly. Thank you, Mayfly. Um, I'm so uh, used to installing a dev 
package using the command dpkg i think minus i so this was the first time that i see uh, the uh, command executed this way but i did notice something funny when you execute this way there's going to be like a warning message it's not an error message i think it's like an it's like a warning message that appears as soon as you finish executing this command i'll show you that warning that i'm talking about and all i do basically to make the warning go away i just basically run the sudo install again and then the warning is nowhere to be found you will see what i'm talking about in a moment so i go i'm playing i'm playing back i'm copying the command now There you go. So, um, as you can see that the Vagrant did download and I did cheat a little bit there by cutting off some frames. It did download and then it did arrive. Next, that's the command that's gonna run very quickly. There you go, it ran quickly. Here's a warning that I'm talking about. It says the download is performed sandbox as root file and couldn't be accessed by the user apt permission denied. I don't know what that means, but when I ran the command again, as you can see, then the error goes away and um, the vagrant package is indeed uh, installed. So there we go. There you go, can you see no error? And there's the there's me executing Vagrant version just to confirm that this particular version of Vagrant is installed. All right. Next, we install the Python pip package. Click yes. There you go package is, is installed and there we go i'm just verifying that is it's that the package is installed and then i get that verification next it's the python virtual environment click yes done and then finally we clone, but on this machine, Git is not installed. So I install the Git package first. I think I do hit the fast forward button here just to speed things up a little bit. Yes, I did. Now it's done and now I can clone. There you go. Code is now cloned. Next, we start the Python environment and I've um, the Python virtual environment and I have called my Python virtual environment. I've called it VNV Gold, which stands for virtual environment Gold. Now you don't have to go according to this particular convention. In fact, even when you have a look at the instructions from the GitHub, you'll realize that they call it something different. I just needed to keep track of what I'm talking about. And that's why I called mine VNV Gold. You can call it whatever you want, of course, but it's just that uh, you have to, uh, when you do initiate that environment, you just need to um, remember what you called it when you created the environment. So here we go. Copy the instruction. Hit enter. It doesn't take very long. And then it creates the virtual environment. There you go. And now we have to change the folder into gold slash Ansible. And then we activate the environment. And once we've done that, it's time to install the Ansible module using the pip. Okay, let's activate. And now we install the Ansible module. Here it installs this quick. I didn't use any trickery here to fast forward the video. It does install that quickly. However, I may have done it here. I cannot remember now. Let's have a look. 
no nope, i think this one installs just as quick as well there's no trickery there it doesn't install that quickly and finally we install the uh, galaxy requirements let's look at the size does it tell you the size no it does not yes i did do some trickery there can you see how quickly the cursor is flashing that's usually an indication to you that i use some edit trickery to fast forward the process by the way i use terms like fast forward it just shows you how old i am this goes back in the days of uh, vhs video when we used to have a fast forward button i don't even know what's called nowadays but yeah i use terms like fast forward do you excuse me all right so um at this stage yeah at this stage the package is installed all that remains now is for you to um, uh, get vagrant to provision the box for us and that's going to be in part two so thank you for watching